Good morning, everybody. Uh, today we're going to run through three kingdoms and then also some viruses. So this is actually going to go really quick. Okay. So the first thing I need to remind you about a virus is it is not alive. Okay. Remember the first day of the school, we went over characteristics of living things. Um, viruses are not considered alive mainly because they are not made of cells and they don't grow or develop. They don't eat. They don't care what temperature it is, any of that. The only thing that they can do is reproduce, but it has to have one of our cells to do that. Okay, so they are non-living. They're extremely small. We don't classify them with a scientific name like we do other organisms that we did last week. They're usually named after what they infect or like a numbering system. And something I want you to remember too, they destroy a cell that they invade. So if you get a virus in a cell, that cell will be destroyed, no questions asked, okay? So here's the basic structure of a virus. There's basically two things you need to remember. They do have DNA as their genetic material or RNA. Some of the more deadlier uh, retroviruses, they call them, have RNA on the inside. And then they have an out outer coat of protein, which is called a capsid. That's about it. And then there are some viruses that have a third thing around them that is called an envelope, and they're even harder to destroy. So it's almost like you having on your t-shirt and then a sweatshirt and then a jacket okay all right so shapes of viruses they come in various shapes um polyhedron which just means many sided helical obviously because it looks like a slinky on the inside here studded almost like um some of those bracelets or dog collars that you can put on your pet and then bacteriophage this one looks like a tiny little robot so this is a virus that attacks bacteria so that should tell you how small those guys are okay and then viral diseases some examples here herpes chicken pox measles mumps hepatitis the flu all common colds aids and of course our lovely corona is also a virus right covid19 um, and the only protection we have from viruses really are vaccines. Um, no antibiotics work against viruses. Okay, I just want to make sure you remember that. All right, so let's skip on to bacteria. Now, bacteria are the first two kingdoms of living things. Okay, what separates bacteria from all other kingdoms is the fact that they are prokaryotic, which what that means is they do not have a nucleus inside of their cells. Their DNA is just kind of free floating. And they also don't have all of those other cell parts that you probably studied in um, middle school. We haven't done those yet in our class, but like mitochondria and ER and chloroplast and all those different things they do not have. So when I was in high school, bacteria was just one kingdom, but since then they've actually divided it into two kingdoms, archaebacteria and eubacteria. Archae just means ancient. So these are like super weird bacteria that aren't uh, common. And then eubacteria are ones that we find around us every day. Okay, so let's start with the archaebacteria. They live in super extreme places where there's little or no oxygen. So like there's kind that feed off methane. So these are in marshes or like the digestive tracts of mammals. You know, like if you go deer hunting or whatever, you're not supposed to shoot the deer in the gut because then it could ruin the meat. That's because of the bacteria in there. The, um, you know how we call it the Dead Sea because there's nothing alive in there. It's actually a lie. There are trillions upon trillions of bacteria in there and then some can also survive in sulfur springs or like deep cracks in the ocean okay now the u bacteria eu is the prefix that means good and i don't mean that these bacteria are necessarily good for you i just mean that they have to live in hospitable places like more normal places okay um the structure of a bacteria i know this one kind of looks like a Tylenol capsule that you would take, but I just want to show you they're pretty basic. Here's the DNA. Notice it is not in a membrane bound nucleus. These pearl looking things are ribosomes, which make proteins. And then this one has a membrane, a wall, and it has these pointy pili things on the outside for protection. And this one must be a waterborne bacteria because it has these flagella, which help it swim. So that is the basic structure of a bacteria. They're pretty simple. 
Okay, so when someone discovers a new bacteria, the first thing they're going to do is look at it under the microscope and discover what shape it is. All bacteria are classified by their shape. Okay, so if they are round, they are called cocci. So a very common one of this that you are well aware of is strep throat. The short, that's the short version. It actually is like streptococcus. So that tells you that strep throat is a round bacteria. Okay, bacilli are rod shaped, kind of like Mike and Ike's, if you guys have ever eaten those or Tic Tacs. Um, they have a rod shape to them. And then spirilli are spiral shaped, kind of like a, a special noodle, like a spiral noodle, okay, or um, like a zigzag kind of, you know what a spiral is. So that's the third shape. These are the um, most deadliest and these are the most common, okay. All right, so bacteria, everybody hears the word bacteria and they think they're dangerous all the time and they can be, but remember, especially when we were doing the carbon and nitrogen cycle, um, bacteria are actually really helpful. They recycle all the garbage and leaves and trash and stuff. And then they also help plants fi ni fix nitrogen. They are in foods, they are in medicines. If you guys look at a yogurt, it will always say on the back, contains active yogurt, yogurt cultures. That's bacteria. A lot of cheeses are made with bacteria. Okay, so they're not always bad guys. But speaking of which, here are some bad guys. Um, they can obviously cause disease or illness, strep throat like we mentioned, tuberculosis, tetanus or lockjaw, Lyme disease that we can get from ticks. It's, it's from a bacteria that lives inside of them. Cavities are actually caused from bacteria tons of them. And we do have treatment for an, for bacteria, unlike viruses, which are antibiotics. Okay. But remember an antibiotic will not help you if you're talking about a virus. Okay. Um, bacteria can reproduce sexually and asexually. So remember our discussion when we did characteristics of living things, sexual basically just means they have a partner and all these two guys will do is exchange some of their DNA and then they split themselves in half. Okay, that's sexual because there's a partner. And then notice this one is asexual because there is only one bacteria. Basically, he copies his DNA and then he splits himself in half. This is called binary fission. But notice partner, which is sexual, no partner, asexual. Okay. All right, so let's move on to the last kingdom for today. These are protists. And protista actually means the very first, not because they're the first organisms on the planet, but because they are the first eukaryotic organisms, which means they actually have a nucleus. Okay, so there's one here, here, there's one here, this one has one here, this one has one here, and so on. Okay, so it's a step up from bacteria. They still have DNA, but it is inside a nucleus this time, and they have all of those other cell parts, mitochondria, chloroplast, ribosomes, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, all right, so here are the characteristics of protists. They are normally unicellular, okay, which means they're only one cell is the whole organism. We classify them first by how they eat, then by how they move. And I'll show you some examples of how they move in a minute. Most of these are aquatic, which means they hang out in the water. Some are parasites. If you guys have seen um, like holes in fish sometimes when you catch them, like fish kills, a lot of those are from protists. So some animals, I mean, sorry, some protists act like animals and some act like plants. And what I mean by that is some of them can use the energy from the sun and do photosynthesis and they get their, their food that way, their autotrophs. And then the other ones have to physically eat like us. Okay, so this is how you classify a protist. It's usually by how it moves. And there are four modes of movement, okay? One is none, and most of the ones that are parasites have no movement, okay? Another one is by cilia. Do you see all these little hairs around the outside here? They're like little nose hairs, and that's what how they move around, okay? The euglena over here moves by a flagella, right? Flagella is sing uh, plural, flagellum is singular. It's a tail, right? So they can swim with that. And then amoebas move by something called a pseudopod, which means fake foot. And all they kind of do is extend that out and like move themselves around. But y'all, they also eat with these things too, okay? So these help them sweep, sweep food into their mouth. These help them grab food. 
And then, of course, the euglena doesn't need to do that because these green things are chloroplasts, so they actually do photosynthesis. Okay, and then I also want to show you um, some special adaptations that are found in protists. So remember this guy here, you see he's green, so he obviously does photosynthesis. He has something called an eye spot. Now, I don't want you to think that it's an eye and he can like see everything around him. It's very primitive and all it can do is detect light. So it kind of reminds me of, you know, like if you're laying in your room and your eyes are closed, but someone flips on the light, like you can tell that the light has been flipped on, even if you don't open your eyes. That's kind of how I envision an eye spot. And obviously that's a great adaptation for him because he needs the sun to do photosynthesis. So if he can kind of sense where the sun is with his eye spot, he can swim towards the light. Okay, and the other one I wanted to show you here is a contractile vacuole. We haven't done cell parts yet, but remember a vacuole is, it's, it's a storage tank and most vacuoles store water. Okay, so if this particular paramecium has too much water in him, he could actually explode and die. So they have something called a contractile vacuole, which basically means exactly like it sounds. It can contract. So if it is holding too much water, it can actually squeeze it out and push it out of its body. So then it will not explode. So both of these are survival mechanisms. Okay. All right. So that's all I wanted to go over today are viruses, remember, non-living, um, destroy the cell they're in. The only protection you have from them are vaccines. Bacteria, which are the first two kingdoms, Archaebacteria, which are the ancient guys, and then Eubacteria, which are the more modern bacteria, okay, and then protists, have a nucleus classified by how they move around. Okay, if you guys would complete the Google form on these things, we'll be done for the day, and I will see y'all soon.